Roger Federer at his peak was pretty much unbeatable, except that is for Nadal on clay, of course. Between 2004 and 2007, Federer won 11 Grand Slam titles and broke the streak for most consecutive weeks ranked number one. But did you know that there was one other player other than Nadal that really tested Federer? I'm talking about none other than David Nalbandian, the immensely talented player from Argentina who won the first five matches against Federer. At the start of 2006, Nalbandian's head-to-head -head record with Federer was 6-4 with Nalbandian winning the last match between the two, a classic five-setter in the Masters Cup final the year before. In 2006, Federer narrowly escaped two matches on clay against Nalbandian, one being the semi-final in Rome, where Federer won a tight match in the deciding tiebreak. And then, a few weeks later, Nalbandian had to retire in the Roland Garros semi-final, being tied one sets all. So when the two geniuses were set to face off in yet another semi-final at the Madrid Masters later that year, all bets were off the table. But Federer, who would end the season with a 92-5 winning record, really stepped on the gas in this match to show who was boss. So, without further ado, let's get going. Thank you. Yeah, the one question mark obviously is still whether he's ever going to be able to win the French Open or not. And interestingly, he said after winning the US Open this year that he firmly believes now he can win the Grand Slam next year. Well, perhaps in the dark. Well, one of Nadal, uh, Nalbandian's rather, favourite plays is to go up the line. Don't worry, Nadal does it too. And Federer does that rather well too. Shortening the courses. Nalbandia will have to come in on an approach shot that will be a little more effective than that one. Federer's backhand has improved so much in the last couple of years. from the Masters. And he's broken. Well, well, well. He's in this match at last with a vengeance. He can't do anything about the luck factor. That was a great serve. Well, normal service has been resumed at last. Is advisable to try and sneak into the net once you sense that your opponent has to play defensively. Not the big gap, didn't he? going to challenge. Here is the first challenge. Let's see how he can challenge that. He had a good swipe at the ball to try and make the pass. He played the ball. He didn't stop the rally. And there is the evidence that Federer wanted to see. And 
Yeah, we ought to just discuss that last point of the set because the rule is clear. Charles that court. Yes, well played. Service pace. Yes, back to normal. Three love. Nothing on that now, Bandy and Brownstroke. Really, you've got to do a little more with the ball when you're playing against the world number one. Interesting looking at the stats on the serve in this set for the two players. Now, Bandian's actually got 81% of his first serves in, but he's only won 38% of the points, so there's not enough on it. Well, poor old Mal Bandian, he's doing all the running today, and to no avail. He's not in good enough shape to be able to... Deep Federer today is a little jaded from... Oh, majestic. Well, he's certainly the king of the court this afternoon. Cruising now in second gear. Five love. Federer now will know that the match is his, and he'll be delighted, I think, not to have been pushed closer. He does love a test, but by this stage in the tournament, I think he would welcome an easy victory, and then he can go back to the hotel, chill out, enjoy his meal this evening. It's 150k, that service, 93 miles an hour. Shelling peas, isn't it? Well, a triumph, no other word will suffice. For somebody who has such a good record against him, an old foe, it must be a very satisfying feeling to have beaten him so easily. 6-4, 6-love in just under the hour.